Hey everybody, it's Eddie here. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about this chart and share why I'm using this particular model to help me understand that the bottom is already in and why we should be expecting another bull market moving forward in 2024. So this is a model that I've created and I believe that I've shared it on my channel before, uh, but I broke up this chart into 450 days at a time. And what it does is it kind of helps us see market cycles in terms of waves. So when we see yellow, that basically means a sideways slash rebound. Green means bull market, red means bear market. So we have to start back in 2011. You can see that uh, the market, yes, did technically have like a bear market, a crash. But if you compare the price where the beginning to the end started, you would have pretty much broken even. And then you can see that once we've entered the green zone, we entered a bull market. From 2014 all the way to 2015, bear market. From 2015 to 2016, the market recovered. And once we entered into the green zone, you can see that the market made new all-time highs and entered a new bull market. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, it's not completely accurate, but it helps us determine like the waves of the market, what to expect moving in that cycle, that time period. The market did end up topping out in December of 2017, but overall within that 450 day time frame, it was a complete bear market. So if you bought anywhere within that red zone, you would have been in the red. Yellow was a recovery, rebound, consolidated, traded sideways. And again, in 2020 all the way to 2021, that was a new bull market making new all-time highs. And although in November of 2021, Bitcoin did make a new all-time high, the overall trend of the entire market was a bear market. And then Bitcoin made a new low right in the yellow zone. And we've been just rebounding and recovering since then. So if you look at this chart, it's not going to tell you where the top is, nor is it going to tell you where the bottom is, but it is going to give you an idea of when to accumulate, when to exit, and when not to hold a position. There's a saying that I like to share amongst my friends and people who invest, and that is that you cannot time the top, you cannot time the bottom, but there's a lot of money and opportunity to be made in the middle. And I think this is a very accurate chart of that, right? Like it's not like we're trying to top the tops and bottoms, but in the middle, there's so much opportunity there. So based on this model, I believe that the bottom is already in. It could have happened in the red zone. It could have happened uh, maybe in the middle. But considering how much time has passed by, uh, we're almost entering into the green zone. I think we're going to enter uh, into it in about, what, 30, 30-ish 30 days? Yeah, 30 days. Now, does that mean once we enter into the green zone, it's just going to be full-on bull market? Not necessarily. There could be, you know, a small sell-off and then a bounce back into the green zone. In 2011, that happened right before we entered into the green zone. Dipped in the green zone, but regardless, when you bought in, you would have been up. And in 2020, if you were there, uh, we had the entire Black Swan COVID crash uh, that happened right before we entered into the green zone. Zone. So the lesson here is that it's not too late. I think a lot of people feel like because they missed buying under 20K, buying in the mid 30K range feels too late. But that's what people said when Bitcoin was at 10K. When Bitcoin was at 10K, people were like, man, I missed buying Bitcoin under 4K, under 5K. I feel like it's too late. But during that time period, I was actually accumulating very, very aggressively because I was like, wow, the bottom seems like it's in. Uh, we're about to enter into the new bull market. So I accumulated and did pretty well in 2021, 2022. Another thing to factor in is the Bitcoin halving. This happens every single four years. This is where the supply gets cut in half. So it gets much more difficult to mine Bitcoin every single year. Therefore, there's less supply, more demand. That's where the price increase happens. Uh, one thing you'll notice if you overlay the Bitcoin halvings of the previous ones to the chart, to this model, it happens kind of in the begin the end of the yellow slash beginning of green uh, boxes, right? Right over here, right in between over here. A little after the yellow, right in the beginning of the green. And you can see that the next halving is going to be sometime in mid-April, which is actually a little further out into the green zone. Another thing to note is that Bitcoin has never broken above its previous all-time high until after the halving. So my best guess, based on historical data, not that it will determine future price uh, price prices, but I do feel like Bitcoin will not reach its previous all-time high until after April of 2024. So if you feel like, man, it's too late to accumulate, personally for myself, this is kind of the season where I've been accumulating a little bit more aggressively. Uh, this is a great time to accumulate, in my personal opinion. This is not financial advice. Now, if I had to do a short-term price prediction at the time I'm making this video, I do feel like Bitcoin will uh, be on its way to 
to $42,000. I think that's bound to happen no matter what. Uh, definitely $48,000 is in the cards as well. Uh, a reason I say that is because the 0.618 is like a trader's take profit level. So typically what happens is there's a rally up or a push up or a buy or a squeeze up to the 618. There's going to be a sell off. If you look at the very first cycle, you can see that it went all the way up to the 618 pretty much got a sell off, but because it happened right at the edge of the yellow entering into the green, it was a very short sell off rallying into the next bull market. If you look at the uh, two years ago cycle, same thing happened as well, where Bitcoin went all the way down, rallied up to the 618, got a wick up there, pretty much got a sell off. And it had a slow bleed off. And that's probably because if you guys were here at this time, this rally happened a little bit too suddenly. A lot of people were calling for a new all time highs. But because we were not even midway through the yellow zone, uh, it was just a slow bleed until we entered into the green zone. Same thing is, I believe, going to happen uh, going forward into the next cycle where we did get a slow bleed. We had a very, very slow, consistent uh, lower highs and higher highs. My expectation is that within the next month, so that means that can happen in the next three days or the next 30 days, uh, I feel like Bitcoin has a potential to reach all the way up to 48K. From 48K, we'll probably have like a one small sell-off. And then entering into January 2024, we're going to see a bull market. Having will occur, then break new all-time highs and consolidate. Not consolidate. We're going to rally up. It's going to be an insane bull market in 2024. Now, how high do I think Bitcoin will go? Uh, I think we'll, we'll talk about that when the time comes. But I think it could at least reach 155K. Uh, if I'm looking at this, uh, probably going to be 200. Okay, I think that's very, very reasonable. But one thing is for sure, I'm going to be using this model and I'm going to be exiting the market while we're still in the green zone. Because from March of 2025 all the way to May of 2026, I expect it to be a bear market and I will be reaccumulating my positions in 2026. Is this chart super accurate? Not necessarily. Is it useful? Yes. Until... It breaks. So we're going to keep using it until it works. And once it breaks and doesn't work, we're going to trash it and we'll use a different model. Personally, for myself, I've been accumulating a little bit more aggressively because I could see that the bottom has already been in. Yes, there could be some short term sell offs, but from like a year perspective, I know that from one year from now, personally, this is my strategy. Uh, I'm most likely going to be in be in profit. But personally, for myself, I'm not trying to like get the absolute bottom. I think that's where a lot of the greed comes in of like they people want to buy the absolute bottom to maximize their profit. For me, it's like the market is a machine. The market is a machine that has so much opportunity for people to just generate passive income or even full time income. If people are trying to maximize their profit, that is a form of greed. And that same extremity, their loss will be that much greater as well. So if you are a type of person who is just like, I want to be consistent and just make income here and there, make profit here and there, your losses aren't going to be as great as well. Well, with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was helpful and I'll see you guys in the next one.